This is Old Cap. And this is Not a Spring Chicken. Today we're going to be talking about our review of... The Oscar screening. The El Los Angeles Antelope Oscar screening of The Muppets. Yes. And what happens is there's a Q&A that happens after the screening. And this time the, the Q&A was with Jason Siegel, who was the writer and, and uh, the executive producer. And he was also acting in it. And he was. And you uh, might know him from How I Met Your Mother. He was joined by the director James Bobbin, and we go down the line because, um, and uh, was it Todd Lieberman and I think uh, um, and Nicholas Stroller. Yeah, and yep. Todd was a producer, and Nicholas was the executive producer. Yeah, so we can tell you right off the bat that the, that there, there it, okay. The, the movie was produced by people that grew up, uh, produced, directed, written, and everything by people that grew up with the Muppets. Guess what that means? It means they got overwound up with the Muppets. And they love the Muppets. So yeah. here's part of it is if you love the Muppets, or you think you might like the Muppets, you definitely have to come see this movie because it's just like, in a way, it's like going back in time. Well, yeah, no, it was, if you, if you remember the Muppets, okay, here's the problem is, is that Muppets are, uh, I think what they said, Muppets have an internet presence, mm -hmm. but they no longer have a television presence, which seems to be god awful stupid considering they're like, a Disney company. I know, it's like, why not? <laughs> you, you would think that they would be doing more stuff with them than they are, mm -hmm. so, but um, it's, uh, but they aren't. Here's the synopsis of the whole movie, which is, uh, it's all about getting them back together again. And, and bringing back the Muppets. Now, here's the funny part is while we're sitting there watching it, I'm thinking, yeah, they're putting the Muppets together to bring them back. And so it's like the rebirth of the Muppets all again, like with the movie. Yeah. And it's, uh, but in reality, it's actually all about bringing the Muppets back because the Muppets have been away. Uh -huh. And they're, okay, but the, um, here's the problem is that the basic problem is that the people that are going to see the Muppets are the wrong audience. Like we had a gentleman who was sitting next to me that basically he didn't he he, he didn't bring his kids even Why though not? He, because he they didn't like who the Muppets they didn't know who the Muppets they don't were. know who the Muppets well, were. you know I think part of it is is you know like how Disney they'll remake these movies and they'll bring them out so often yeah. is like for the parents to bring the kids back to mm -hmm. right but the Muppets have been away so long and the trick is because Sesame Street has licensed oh. his own batch of Muppets. Other than Kermit, you basically, I think Kermit, like you saw, other than Kermit, there are no Muppets from Sesame Street in that movie. Were there before? Yeah, <laughs> no, and the old Muppets, the movie, okay, Big Bird. there is, oh, yeah. How about Cookie Monster? But those aren't Muppets, are they? Those are Muppets. They're all Muppets. What, all Miss Piggy? Has a, Miss Piggy's a Muppet. No, but no. But Miss Piggy, was no, Miss Piggy, Piggy was not Sesame on Street? Sesame Street. But the Sesame Street Muppets are not allowed to cross over, and the kids know the Sesame Street Muppets. So if they'd have had, say, you'd have had the Cookie Monster, or yeah. you'd have had Big Bird, you'd have known that they would have known who they are. But they don't know who the Muppet Muppets are. Which is, if, you know, you watch it carefully because, I mean... Well, it, it's funny because as you're talking about that, I think of Muppets as Kermit and Miss Piggy. Yeah. Right? And, and uh, Ozzy and the extra people. And then I think of Sesame Street, even though they were Muppets, I don't think of them as Muppets. Yeah. But the Muppets go back god-awful long. I mean, they go back to the 1950s. I mean, really? yeah, they're the early television, but, um, but uh, they know, the the plot basic... Okay, here's the problem with <laughs> Jason... Um, Jason, Jason Siegel. Siegel basically wrote a script that would, totally had to be thrown out after he got it. It didn't mm -hmm. remember, it didn't work because he forgot. He, he created a Muppet that wasn't a Muppet. He created oh. a Muppet that was a puppet. Well, actually, and then they answer the age old question is he man or Muppet? Or Muppet or man? <laughs> Muppet or man? Yeah, but you know, so. Uh, because they grew up as twins when he was little, Jason Siegel with his Muppet friend. Yeah. Walter. But Jason, Jason Siegel, you know, he's you know he's on um, How I Met Your Mother, mm -hmm. and he was also you know he, he was uh, forgetting Sarah Marshall. He's been uh, used to write <laughs> like he was a teenager writing for Jack Black, but um, he does make a let's see an unwilling appearance. <laughs> yeah. Here, here's the neat part about the movie is that they said. 
they, you know, you'd think that they had a, they would have a problem getting big stars to do cameos. No, they, they said the opposite situation existed. They had too many people that wanted to do cameos, and they had to put people in. They said, like, they said, uh, remember, this was all really like the television show, the half-hour TV show that was on Jews. Mm -hmm. uh, it was like that, where you'd have cameos, but the cameos had to actually fit in, like Rudolph Nourier dancing in Swine Lake. And then our Rudolph Nuria cap dancing with Miss Piggy. So they had all these people that were fans of the Muppets that all just they wanted to be yeah. the next Muppet. But they fit in the spots they were at, like Mickey Rooney playing a uh, Mickey Rooney as type character in a huge production number at the beginning. Uh, Whoopi Goldberg. Whoopi Goldberg. I just wanted to be in a Muppet movie. <laughs> you know, Selena Gomez. <laughs> you know, uh, basically. They, no, anybody they could pick up the Disney lot, I think, was also. Uh, oh, is that what it was? was? Yeah, you know, but um, um, but they they, they 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 said the the you know like in the Muppet television series the the you know um, you know like uh, where well, you had Neil Patrick Harris. I I should have been hosting it, not black. Well, you know, here's the funny part is that what you can do in a Muppet movie is <laughs> they're sitting there talking about puns. Wow, the puns. puns. In fact, they cut back the number of puns to make it. Well, the puns were too many. There were too many puns. It was unbearable. It was, well, yeah, I love that. They, they, they had a pun on every page, and then they cut back to one out of every three, and they were all bear puns. They kept making puns about bears. You know, bear puns all over the movie. So, but um, but it, you know, get a basic plot. You got to have a plot. Uh, oh yes. Let's see. Walter lives with his brother. He was a human in small town. They become Muppet fans when they watch the Muppet Show in their youth because he's a Muppet, folks. And they right. just, I mean, how did, they don't know how the hell they could get a Muppet brother. <laughs> you know, well, it wasn't that way to begin with because the original, the original script was he was he was Gary's puppet, not his brother. Uh -huh. Remember, he was. So when puppet. they when they first start out, they show them as they go grow through the years. Is they're both about the same size and height, yeah. and then Walter the Muppet puppet <laughs> stays the same size, and Jason gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. yeah. And, and there was a reason also behind that because here's you got all these guys that should know better. They got when they met Kermit for the first time, he's two, two, he's two foot tall. Well, yeah, that was a funny part because they were sitting there talking about Jason being six and a half feet tall yeah. and, and Kermit being two and a half feet tall. So, yeah. I mean, think about it from the camera to get both of them in the same scene. Yeah, it basically you had to change the perspective on everything. Um, so, but they said they were overwhelmed when they discovered. He's two foot tall. You know, he, he's like this. And everybody in the room, you know, they're all like six footers, all yeah. of them. And so they're sitting there having a look. I mean, what it is, uh, was it the one guy said that he'd watched it since, you know, there, most of them were young men. He'd watched it since it was filmed, you know, in, in 1976. It was filmed like for 10 years in England. That's what he thought. They think of the Muppets as an English project, not an American. But they said he remembers up on the television set watching. And he thought Herbert was bigger than he was. Herbert well, because you don't know his perspective. Yeah, you and know, then they're they all look, like short they're like adults that. and they go see the Muppets. And here's a good second thing. They didn't realize it was god awful difficult to work with puppets. <laughs> they didn't realize that how much effort that you had to take to hide everybody. That's well, you got to hide everybody because if you've got five Muppets here, you need space for five people, yep. right, to control the, the puppets. And at, the times, puppets. and at times, they have 70 Muppets on the stage at one time. Can you imagine? 70 with that 70 individual handlers. Here come the trick is, some of the individual handlers handle more than one Muppet. So if they're handling a Muppet, it means they got to bring in other handlers to handle the other Muppets that mm -hmm. they're doing. And then there's also voices for the Muppets mm -hmm. that aren't necessarily the guy handling the thing. So, and then there are singing voices for the Muppets that aren't necessarily the same voices. So, uh, but what happened was, you know, I mean, I'll guarantee you, it's the first bloody movie we have seen in two months that we actually wanted to go see. We kids. Most, a lot of the times we've seen a lot of these Oscar screens, you're like, oh, this is an important movie, you're, it's really good acting, this is, da -da. but this is one of the ones that, this is done by studio, yeah. that we were really looking forward to for the actual movie. The other ones we're actually looking forward to the Q&A by the actors. Yeah. But this one, it's like, oh yeah, we get to go see the Muppets. <laughs> yeah, okay. 
This is a movie that was longer than any of the other movies we went and would see, and it was the fastest paced movie of the bunch. Yeah. It was, you know, basically the puns are flying right and left, and they do Muppet stuff, which is basically Muppet map, which basically kept the, the zero time down by going from one place to another page line on the map. Yeah, like how do you drive from, 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 from California to, to, London, to, Paris. to Paris? Yeah, you, Muppet yeah. map. So Muppet Man. And then they come out out of the water in the Rolls Royce. Yeah, but um, <laughs> and con. <laughs> yeah, but um, the, but the, 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 the oh, back to the storyline. No, but the trick is like we were talking to guys. Every one of these guys was just totally enamored with working. You know, like I said, it wasn't one of these things where you had to pout, you had to go beg people. Do you have produce, director, write, do the music? Oh, I can't write music for the Muppets. I know. <laughs> I, actually, I remember them sitting there talking about, and Jason was talking about when he was first sitting down there and Kermit started talking at their first table reading, and, and he started just, crying. He started crying, <laughs> and they got it on tape. Okay, here, he, okay, here's the one that he did. He walked into the room thinking they were going to be doing with the handlers. No, right. Kermit was there. And they had, like, the guy, that, what is it, uh, Todd said they had 12, the, the, I said we had 12 cameras there because we were taping everything was being done because we wanted to see the run through so which would you say we extras for your DVD folks you know you uh, actually to. it's one of the ones it's like I'd really like to see the DVD inserts because you, you know they're gonna we know what's them. coming yeah. because they did say they got this big six foot 300 pound and it was much heavier when the movie started than when it ended you know, you know. And actually, the, the scene that I want to see is when you were talking about how they were going to go approach Amy Adams. Yeah. Okay. So they, Jason helped put this together, right, with the studio. Yeah. With, <laughs> with Kermit. <laughs> Kermit. Well, they did. They were afraid that Amy Adams was going to turn him down, but you so, couldn't turn. You couldn't turn Kermit down. So Jason Siegel and Kermit went to go talk to Amy Adams. And Jason said, I never felt a more desperate pan <laughs> pantry <laughs> we went to go ask Amy to be in the movie. And then he also followed up. He said, "My, he, he just all, like I said, epiphany, oh, God, what if she had turned, turned Muppet, if she had turned Kermit down? They had no follow-up. But what happened was, was they said, they penciled all of these people in that they wanted. They penciled them into the script. And those are the only ones they asked. And, and it never dawned on a whole bunch. It's like, what would happen? I know, they were already in the script. Now, one of the ones, um, who was the surprise? Chris Cooper. Oh, yeah. Oh, Chris Cooper does a song and dance routine, folks. A rap. A rap. Which you never. Yeah. It's like, it's real, like where did that come from? Yeah, you know, like Cooper. he said that, uh, uh, Jason said that he understands why the Cooper got an Academy Award and many nominations, and Amy has a, had many nominations, because they really take it seriously. They, you know, because they said Cooper went and studied, you know, he said that some of those guys are really, they're great actors. And he's basically, and they said, you know, like, my God, Chris Cooper's on top of table dancing. And he can dance, he, you know, he can rap, he can dance. You know, which is a basically, Chris Cooper never does anything funny. I mean, I don't, I mean, okay, it's just like, um, I mean, I mean, I've met, um, the, what was the guy that played James Bond? No, Timothy Dalton. I've met Timothy Dalton. He's the most god-awful, boring person on the screen in the world on, te on movies and TV. In person, the guy is basically Leslie Nielsen. He never stops being body. And that, uh, my guess is Chris Cooper off camera that did the rapping, dancing Cooper is really Chris Cooper. And he just... I it, was, it was really just kind of funny because it was something that you would never expect. And I, I can still remember going on this, I'm watching it on the screen. Oh, we did get to see the ever growing, you know, uh, uh, ever growing leading lady in the movie, though. She was she was a little bit expecting what the movie was on. Uh, but you know, Amy Adams is great in this movie. Oh, she's, she's singing and she's dancing. Just, you know, I, I can see why they wanted Amy because she's like these roles were built for her. Well, yeah, I mean, she. <laughs> 